Armed Rogue recently mentioned in a video that she was trying to identify edible plants in her region. And that reminded me that I had a similar goal in my prepper planner, which I'll put a link right up there to that video, on to do something similar here to identify the plants and trees on my property. So I'm going to gradually catalog them one by one and I'll try to share that information with you. I'm making up a little binder and I'm putting in sheets for each plant and it has pictures, how to identify the plant, um, how the look-alikes that might be toxic that you have to be careful so you don't die, and the edible uses of the plant, the medicinal uses, and any other uses. And then I'm also including uh, cooking recipes and medicinal recipes. And then a link of resources. Now I'm going to share these sheets with you. Um, here's a card to the URL where I'm keeping the sheets and you can download them. There's also the link in the about section of this video. Disclaimer, I am not a wild plant expert by any means. Always do your own research before following a so-called expert on YouTube. Remember, your life may depend on it. I had a huge plant growing right in here. And my husband, bless his heart, decided to uh, take out the trimmer and go around the entire border of my garden. I had other useful plants on the border too. He thought they were all weeds. So now they're all gone. I'm sure they'll grow back pretty quickly though. But not to fear, I can always find other wild mustards growing on my property. There's a beautiful specimen of wild mustard growing right on the creek edge. And there's plenty more also boarding the creek and across the creek. So there's plenty of wild mustard on my property. Varieties of wild mustard are found almost everywhere except in the desert. In fact, they even grow in the Arctic Circle. I found an excellent resource for identifying the plant on the University of Idaho's website. It's entitled The Identification of Canola, Mustard, Rapeseed, and Related Weeds. Above is a card with the URL for this excellent identification guide. Based on this guide, I believe I have the bird's rape type of wild mustard. All varieties of wild mustard seem to have the same edible and medicinal characteristics, so exact identification does not seem to be necessary. To identify wild mustard's flowers, always remember four petals in a cross formation with six stamens, four tall and two short. First off, I believe this plant is rather pretty and the little flowers are long lasting. However, it has many uses other than just beauty. In the garden, this plant can have beneficial insect control properties against the diamondback moth and the flea beetle. It also attracts female cabbage white butterflies to lay their eggs. The larvae thrive but end up dying due to the presence of saponins. I discovered that this type of insect control is known as dead end trap cropping. The mustard weed can also be used as a green manure. It can be an invasive plant as it likes to grow in a sunny area in bare soil. However, my property is bordered by woodlands, so that is not much of a concern here. I have to give a warning here. Many people are allergic to mustard, so if you've never eaten any, it's best to try only a little at first. In addition, many agricultural departments classify wild mustard as poisonous because if cattle eat too much of it, they can develop stomach problems and get quite ill. Wild mustard can also flavor the milk of cows that eat it, making the milk unsellable. Mustards are in the same brassica family as cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, turnips, and kale, and others. Wild mustard leaves are smoother and less fuzzy than domestic mustard. The hairless seed leaves, or cotyledons, are kidney-shaped with a deep notch in the tip. The leaves are highly nutritious sources of B vitamins, calcium, potassium, and fiber. Young leaves are supposed to taste similar to dandelion greens with a similar bitter taste. Some people eat the leaves directly in salads. Multiple cooking in water removes the strongest bitter flavor and makes them more palatable in a greens recipe, however. By the time the stalks appear, the leaves are too bitter to eat. The young leaves can be substituted for any recipe that calls for spinach. The flowering period of the plant extends from April through July. 
These buds are richer in vitamin A than the leaves and are loaded with protein. The flower buds are supposed to taste like broccoli with a mustard accent. The buds should be boiled in salted water for about three minutes, be sure not to overcook, drained and seasoned with butter and a little vinegar. Be careful not to mistaken this plant for wild mustard. From a distance, this plant, which is commonly called butterweed, looks like wild mustard. However, on closer examination, it is easy to see that the flower petals are not in the cross pattern and are more daisy-like. Misidentification can occur when the flowers are still in bud form. The butterweed, or the S. glabellus, has toothy leaves and they are bland as opposed to the usual peppery taste of wild mustard. This plant is toxic and is laced with pyrolyzidine, which is an alkaloid that can damage your liver. The wild mustard flowers are soon followed by little four-sided seed pods. These are called siliquates. Tender young seed pods are peppery and can be added to salads or stir fries. If you wish to gather the seeds, Wait until the lower seed pods are beginning to burst open and gather up the whole plant. Strip off the seed pods and lay them on a sheet of newspaper to dry for a few days. Once dry, the seed pods can be cracked and the hull separated from the ripe seed. The table condiment, mustard, does indeed come from the mustard seed. You can make mustard out of the wild seeds by grinding the seeds and mixing with brown flour in equal parts vinegar and water until you get the desired consistency. The dried seeds can also be ground in a food mill to make dry mustard, just like the spice you buy in the store. To induce vomiting due to accidental poisoning or a drug overdose, mix a solution of one tablespoon powdered ground mustard seeds in a glass of warm water and drink. If you have an oil press, the seeds will yield an edible and burnable oil. It takes a lot of seeds to produce a small amount of oil though. Canola oil is actually made from the rapeseed plant, an industrial process that removes most of the erucic acid from the raw oil, since this acid can be damaging to the liver and heart. One note though, if you watch the movie Lorenzo's Oil, you might remember that erucic acid was the magic ingredient in the oil formulated to treat adrenal catastrophe or ALD the wasting disease that progressively destroys the brain of young boys and is invariably fatal. The oil doesn't seem to work for people who are already ill, but does seem to prevent illness in those whose genes make them vulnerable to developing symptoms. Medicinal mustard compounds date back to 400 BC. The important medicinal use of mustard is in its heating and blood vessel dilating properties. It used to be standard practice to treat chest colds and sore and aching muscles with a mustard plaster. The ground mustard was mixed with equal parts flour to make a paste. The paste was then smeared on a cotton cloth and then covered with another cotton cloth and placed on the sore area for 20 minutes. When applied, the patient would be able to feel the heat. You have to be careful with this though because some people are sensitive to wild mustard seed and can develop a rash. Mustard tea is also used to lessen headache pain. A mustard vapor can be made to treat sinus congestion. Place a few teaspoons of dried mustard in a bowl and pour hot water over it. Place your face over the bowl with a towel over your head and over the bowl to keep in the steam. Close your eyes because dried mustard can be an irritant. So all in all, I think this wild mustard is a pretty valuable weed and you can find it just about anywhere except the desert. So I'd love to hear if you use it in any recipes or in any medicinal uses. And also, please let me know if you find the uh, sheet that you can download valuable, and then I will keep on doing it. So this is Prepper Potpourri saying, please subscribe and share the knowledge, and thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching.